But now it's time for love and marriage, Huntsville. So we open the episode with Kimmy making a welcome home dinner for Maurice because he's back from taking the bar. Now we're at Melody's first off-book rehearsal for her play. Oh, Lauren, she's got that wig on that's too big. You look like a girl playing in her mama's shit. Ooh, this is some bad acting. Jeez, they gotta give her every line. She only has eight. Tisha, why you gonna ask Marceau why does it always work with him? Y'all are broke. You don't make any money. And you got three kids. T said, well, I don't want you feeling alone. I like who I'm becoming, but I don't want to sacrifice my merge. Because I know some heifer will come get your big ugly ass. She said, I ain't going to end up like the Holtz. God, them whining about, you need to put more time in the relationship. You need to put more time in the relationship. Now I'm giving up so much. I'm giving up so much. Just get divorced. Marceau wanted a stay-at-home wife. Tisha, you changed. Sorry. Marceau was trying to get with the program, but he's like, this is not what I signed up for. If I wanted a career woman, I would have married her. He said, okay, you know what? You spend more time on you and I'll take care of the family since you want to bring up old internships and not leaving Huntsville for me. So Scallop Head, now Loose Wig, is getting ready for Maurice's surprise party and Martell ain't going. And you know why? The Scots. Wait a minute. Scallop Head said, oh, you and Kimmy were by yourselves? I know she always team Martell trying to rub on you and she's been a side chick before. Don't nobody want messy Martell but you. All right, so Kimmy and Reese arrive to the party. I really like Kimmy and Maurice's relationship. This is so nice. Oh, well, girl, what's up with your hair though, Kimmy? Kimmy, normally your hair is right, but this like super, this, this odd bob, oh no, and it is fucked up in the back like you just folded it under. So, Marceau hears how low the bid is for these uh, suites the Destiny's building, and he says, let the Holtz do it. They want it to break into commercial anyway. They need a baby job. So, Destiny walks up, and they tell her, oh, yeah, we think the Holtz should do your project. And she's like, okay, if you don't want my 50000 you don't want my 50000 But don't drag me in the mess. So, now Melody walks up, and Melody says, what are y'all talking about? And Marceau says, oh, I was talking about mentoring some young minority contractors. And Destiny said, no, you were talking about the Holtz and me using them. Marceau, you sound like an idiot. I, I just want to help. Anyone who needs help, I'm here to help. Break glass ceilings. Melody said, honey, ain't nobody asked for your help or your handouts. Ha! She said, look, if I wanted a mentor, it wouldn't be your ass. Complete a project first. And now Tish starts with, the, oh, there's the shady Mel we all know and love. And here come your throw a rock, hide your hand ass. Oh, God, now Marceau gets home and he's whining for dinner. At 5.30, I'm with Tish on this. She's like, I got something out to cook. It's not dinner time. Like, that, that's snack hour. Get yourself some Ritz crackers and peanut butter and shut the fuck up. Oh, now he's complaining she's going to the even. Oh, Marceau said, you know what? I'll go on to the even. I'll get a nice young babysitter. So the event was, I'm sorry, the event was canceled because of the virus. Marceau, you ain't shit. He gonna say, oh, that's so sad. Now she wants to still go to Birmingham. Yeah, when there's a deadly virus running around, not really the time. No, I'm, I'm with Marceau on this one. I can't believe it either. Okay, now Marceau says, well, your family's never been nice to me. And we're from different sides of the tracks. What tracks? Y'all are broke Huntsville heifers. The lot of y'all. Girl, he trying to backpedal and pussy pop because she holding his feet to the fire. Marceau, you know you was trying to throw shade. Oh, Marceau said you feel bad about your upbringing. This ain't on me. Child, T started talking about, well, this girl in college said I lived in the project. And he said, well, I was homeless shit. So you take that stuff back to that heifer and leave me alone with it. But he is, okay, this is a great mind fuck though. You are gaslighting this heifer from different sides of the tracks means I was rich, you were poor, I was stable, you were unstable. And you knew that was gonna hurt her. And that's why you said, I'll get a young babysitter. Please, you just pissed the heifer leaving. You ain't shit, Marcel. Wow, so we end the episode with the whitest song ever? After that tired little argument. All right, well, I'll see you soon. For power, book two, ghost. Or ghost book two, I never remember.
So we starting with Bree and her coot. <laughs> she tell her coot, I need to be around loving people right now, so I'ma hang with the fam. So he tells her, come on over, have a seat. It look like you're about to give her a Werther's original. So he's gonna surprise her to a with a trip to Laguna Beach. He's already packed for her, because that's what she loves, control. A controlling coot. Now back with the sissies in the DMV. Does he have to say pants every time? I mean, I've never heard anybody roll their R on pants, pants, his pants. The mama said, why did she have on that dress looking like a skank? She said, I don't want to know if she's fornicating or not. I'm not interested in the fornications of a floozy. And the mama said, now why are you paying this half of bills? Why'd you offer that? For the beard. For the beard. The mama said, what if she just wants you to be her sugar daddy? I mean, he is sweet, but ain't nobody calling him daddy. She said, I don't approve. Okay, now we got the young married couple. I Well, should be married couple. I'm sick of them. Best fiends. So she said, since his cheap ass won't give me a raise, I'm gonna just go get a new job. Let's see how it goes when she tells them of the interview. Now, why you want kids out of wedlock? You gonna have to pay child support regardless. You like, but I ain't gonna get hit up for that alimony. Back with the hippies in Seattle, Noni is pissed that Reese's families have reservations. She said, let's do a dinner with the family and clear the air. Reese is like, I know these people, they ignorant. They just ignorant, but good luck. Child, the coot got a private jet to whisk Bree away. Oh, wow, the, the coot's got properties. I gotta give him that. This beach house is everything. So he lets his second ex-wife stay there. She was there with her boyfriend. What that gives me is, is a, in the divorce, they agreed to share the house tea rather than have to sell it. She don't know how it goes when you are rich and you divorce. Like, shit is different. So now we got the young kid asking his pappy what he should do about his wife that worked for him. You should stop being so cheap. Oh, his dad cute too. I ain't mad at it. So the pappy says, yeah, you got to get married before you have kids. He's like, don't look at me and your mama. Yeah, our marriage didn't work, but yours might. Oh, he was divorced twice. His mom was divorced three times. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that would put me off marriage too. Back with the hippies in Seattle, Reese tells his family, Mona wants a dinner. They're like, okay, but it ain't gonna go well. So he's telling his sisters, I need y'all to keep mom mellow, all right? Bree is getting scared that her coot ain't gonna marry her. And she's sick of his ex-wives. I mean, you're going to have to deal with two ex-wives while you want to marry him. So he said, look, we ain't going to get married right now. I'm a little prenup shy, but uh, we on the right path. I ain't got that much time anyway. So she'll keep her coot for now. Back with the sissies in D.C. So the sissy tell her what his mama said. She didn't like your skanky dress. Or your constant conversation on copulation. <laughs> Rodney had every chance to tell you to go change, but he didn't because he don't care about you. He just cares about getting full free press and promotion for his wine line. Ha! <laughs> Desiree said, well, she's a minister. She should be praising me for not having sex with her son. Child, she know y'all ain't fucking. She looked at you and said, this young hussy, you should really think <laughs> that I don't know? Desiree says, I feel like a fool now. Your mother was nice in my face, but talk behind that back. You just kept putting your foot in your mouth all through dinner, so she didn't even have a chance. And you were just so proud of your ignorance. Oh, God, so she called his mama a phony, and he said, I'm going to love my mom. I'm going to protect my mom. Your mom is phony, and so are you. Your mom is phony for not telling you, honey, honey, you're gay. Gay as it gets. A big old bottom. Ain't nothing wrong with it. He probably makes a shoop sound when he walks. So back in Seattle, we're getting ready for the dinner with the hillbillies. Child, the sisters complimented the house walking up. The mom said, yep, it's a house. She is not here for this. Oh, Jesus. So we get started early with the, why ain't y'all having kids? And she said, well, look, it's unlikely. So you got a brace for it. And she said, well, this is my only son who can carry on the record name. The re there is no name. No name. No name. No shame. Tell me what is your claim to fame for your, your name. And Reese is like, hold on, hold on. Y'all talk about my sperm. I don't want to use it. I don't want a kid. 
Look at this guy. He does not want that kind of responsibility. So Reese didn't tell them she couldn't have kids. He told them she didn't want them. She already got two or one. You want him to live up to his full potential and you think he can't do that with a rich wife? Child, this is the best Reese is ever gonna do. Reese is a grown man. How are you gonna say what's best for Reese? Reese ain't been doing what's best for himself, living in trucks and whatnot. The mom said, well, if you wanna spend the rest of your life with him, this comes with it. And she's like, I, I am not really here for this family shit show. Okay, so first they're saying this isn't beneficial to Reese. Then she said, before I came along, he was living in his car. And the mom said, that's rude. It's true. You want to say there's no benefit? Look around, half like he's in the lap of luxury. They really are painting Noni like she's just taking this guy for a ride. He wasn't doing anything with his life anyway. Girl, be real. And if he did have a kid with somebody else, you know you'd end up taking care of it. So he nut up. He said, look, I love her. She loves me. It is what it is. You're either with us or against us. And that was the shit.